So, today we will uh, see the computational rules for determinants. So, let me just briefly recall that we have defined determinant <coughs> functions and now we want to use this to compute determinants of matrices. So, let us recall that what was the determinant of a matrix. So, to for a de determinant of a matrix we need a square matrix n cross n matrix. which is A, entries are A, I, J and uh, entries are in some field K. So, this is an element of M and K and to this A, we have associated a scalar which we have called a determinant and this determinant is by definition it is sigma, uh, sigma uh, sin uh, summation sigma in S n permutations sin of sigma product i is from 1 to n a i sigma i. Also we have seen that this is also equal to this equality follows by replacing sigma by the inverse of sigma and this is sin sigma product j equal to 1 to n a sigma j j. And we have also seen uh, when we constructed uh, determinant functions, we have also seen how do this right hand side came out of the alternating multilinear forms on, a, on an n dimensional vector space. And that motivated us to consider this scalar and that is called a determinant. And we have seen some properties of the determinant functions. And uh, today we will find, uh, we will uh, list some computational <laughs> rules which will be useful for computation. So, first of all, I want to think this. So, let me write in the form of a theorem. So, that says the following. So, this theorem think of determinant as a map. So, let A be a square matrix. So, think of then we have seen the determinant, the determinant of A is a scalar that what we have just recalled in definition. And think of this debt as a map from M n k to k. A goes to the determinant of it. And think of this M n k as k power n cross k power n cross k power n n times. So, it is a uh, and this k n is that vector space of n dimension and you can think uh, the tuples as uh, think of these elements of k n as columns. So, with that this is an alternating n multilinear form on the vector space in the k vector space k power n and you should remember, remember here elements of k power n we are thinking as as column vectors.
So, this is what we approved earlier. Uh, uh, I just so now I want to uh, uh, consider the properties and uh, properties of this alternating map. So, for example, how do you characterize uh, uh, invertible matrices? How do you find the inverse of invertible matrices? Also, whether this this induces whether this map determined map whether it is product preserving and properties like this. So, uh, before I continue I just want to mention that for small values of n namely n equal to 1, 2, 3 what we define is the usual definition of the determinant that one learns in, in the school and this is I want to check this little bit. So, for example, uh, for n equal to 1 it is 1 cross 1 matrix. So, that means the matrix is just a 1 1 and if you see the formula that is so the summation is running over s 1 permutations of letter 1 but there is only one permutation of letter 1 that is id identity and therefore, the summation will have only one term and therefore, determinant of a 1 and the sign of the identity permutation is 1 therefore, this is nothing but a 1. Similarly, for n equal to 2 you have the matrix we usually write in the school as a 1 1 a 1 2 a 2 1 a 2 2 and in this case now the group involved permutation group is S 2 which has exactly 2 permutations one of them is identity and the other is the transposition 1 goes to 2 these are the only 2 permutations of the set 1 2 and uh, the sign of identity is 1 this is the signs and sign of the transposition is minus 1 and then the sum is running over now 2 sum has 2 terms the corresponding to the identity term is so a 1 1 times a 2 2 because the second index is the image of the first one and the second term in the summation comes with a minus n because sign of a transposition is minus 1 and then this is a 1 and 1 goes to 2 therefore, a 1 2 and a 2 2 goes to 1 therefore, a 2 1 this is the determinant therefore, in this case determinant of a 1 1 a 1 2 a 2 1 a 2 2 this is this one and this is the usual one a product of the diagonal that is this term product of the diagonals and product of the anti diagonal with the minus sign that is this term. So, this was what usually was mentioned at least when I was in the school in 11 standard. So, similarly for n equal to 3 I will not check this, but n equal to 3 what one what one should check is uh, if you write like this a 1 1 a 1 2 a 1 3 a 2 1 a 2 2 a 2 3 a 3 1 a 3 2 and a 3 3 this determinant sometimes I will one writes instead of that one writes these 2 vertical bars this is by definition the determinant determinant of this matrix a i j that is this i j is 1 1 2 3. and we want to find this determinant. So, the usual recipe given was uh, the a 1 fix this guy then you take the 2 by 2 determinant this is with the plus sign then with the minus sign this guy and then remove this row and this co this uh, column and this row and then that one with the minus sign and again with the plus sign same. So, it will have uh, for this we will have two terms one with a positive sign one with a negative sign for this also we have two terms one with positive sign one with a negative sign 
for this also we have two terms. So, in all together there will be 6 terms. 6 terms comes because the permutation group involved here is S3 and S3 has precisely 6 elements, 3 factorial is the order of S3 and the, we can write down the elements of S3, one of them is identity, then you write down the transpositions that is 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 1 and 3 is fixed, another transposition 1 goes to 3, 3 goes to 1, 2 is fixed, then the another transposition 2 comma 3, these are the transposition, now come the 3 cycle that is and there are 3 of 2 of them 1, 2, 3, 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 3 and 3 goes back to 1 and then 1, 3, 2 and one check that these are we know for sure that these are 3 factorial element that is 6 and these are also 6 element check that they are different but that is clearly different and this will have signs this has sign 1, this has minus 1, this has minus 1, this has minus 1, this has 1 and 1. So, 3 signs which come with the positive, 3 which comes with the negative and those are the term. But this also instead of doing this, uh, there, is a, there is a rule which is attributed to this Sarus. This if one uses this rule, there is less likely to make any uh, errors in a numerical calculation. So, what do you do is you write down these columns A11, A21, A31, A12, A22, A32, A13, A23, A33. These are the original matrix and write down the two columns again next to them. So, I, what I have written, I have written the columns first and second column again and what do I do? I look at this product and this with a positive sign and then I look at these products with a negative sign and that is the determinant. So, see one advantage is here you are only doing this and here you are doing this and this and then minus and so, so there is maybe a possibility to do error that can be minimized if one uses this Sarus rule. Okay. Now, another thing I what I will quickly recall is, so uh, if you have a matrix A, I will write as columns. So, x 1, x 2, x n where x 1, x 2, x n are elements in k power n, they are columns of A and then note the determinant of A, the way we have defined is nothing but um, delta standard basis E of this columns of x n. Let me just recall quickly here, remember here when we define determinant functions that on a vector space V of dimension n, the determinant function is a uh, map form V cross V cross V n times these I will keep writing v power n to k which is alternating and n multilinear. Form, form word is used when the values are scalars and we have checked that this was the main theorem of determinant theory that we have whenever we have a basis v v 1 to v n basis of v, there exists a unique determinant function that is that will depend on this v. So, that we call it delta v 
delta v is an element of alternating n multilinear form so uh, that is an element in alt k n v so n is the dimension such that delta v evaluated on the tuple v1 to vn is 1. So, this was the main theorem and then as a consequence we have proved that these alternating n linear forms a vector space of dimension 1 and therefore, this delta v because it is non zero element because on the tuple v 1 to v n it is non zero this will be a basis of in particular delta v is a basis of k basis of alt n v and so now our vector space in this uh, case because we have fixed the coordinates our vector space v is k power n and the basis I am taking the standard basis e so that is e 1 to e n. So, corresponding to the standard basis we have a standard determinant function that is delta e and when you evaluate this delta e on e 1 to n obviously you uh, get the determinant of an identity matrix and that should be 1 because you see it. So, this this delta determinant of identity matrix is nothing but delta e on e 1 to e n which is 1 and in general determinant of arbitrary matrix is delta e of the columns. So, therefore, this is because this is an alternating and multilinear map I have already the built in properties for the determinant namely if I have two columns are equal then the determinant is 0 because it is alternating map. If I change one column by adding <coughs> one column to the scalar multiple of the other column then the determinant will not change because it is alternating when you expand it those properties and whatever I do it for columns similarly for the rows. So, elementary operations on columns the first two operations will not change the determinants when you exchange the rows or columns the determinant will change by a sign when you multiply a particular column by a scalar the determinant will change by that scalar. So, all these properties are built in in this definition. So, I will not repeat them uh, I will not explicitly write and uh, repeat them here ok. So, the next one next one now let us let us compute uh, determinant of uh, some special matrices for example uh, let me write this as the theorem some of these one may feel they are obvious but obviously one need to prove them formally and and it's very important so let uh, a be a n cross n matrix aij be an upper triangular matrix upper triangular means uh, that is aijs <coughs> are zero for n bigger equal to i strictly bigger than j bigger equal to 1 that means when the row number is bigger than the column number the entries are 0. So, that means the matrix A will look like this on the diagonal it is A 1 1 A n n below diagonal it is 0 and here it is as usual entries A 1 2 A 1 n and so on here it will be 0 A 2 2 a to n and so on here they are all zeros this is an upper triangular matrix we, the uh, below main diagonal all entries are zero see this row number is 2 column number is 1. So, row number should be bigger than the column number strictly bigger than then it is upper triangular when it is the other way when the column number is bigger than the row number then it will be lower triangular. 
and whatever we prove it for upper triangular the same similar result will be true for a low triangular as well because we can simply work with the transpose of the matrix and we noted that the transpose of the matrix and the original matrix the determinants are the same because of the two equalities okay and what is the determinant of this so that is this then, then determinant of a date a is nothing but the product of the diagonal entries this is very easy to prove so prove proof so by definition determinant of a is the sum sum is running over the permutations sign of permutation and then the product i is from 1 to n a i sigma i instead of writing this i could also write spell it out that is a 1 sigma 1 a 2 sigma 2 and so on a n sigma n so this sum this summation is running over n factorial permutations and the, the summands are sign and then this product so we just have to uh, see what happens. So, and this term, this a11, a22, ann, this is corresponding to the permutation sigma is identity because when sigma is identity, sin is 1, and then this sigma 1 is 1, sigma 2 is 2, and so on. So, it is the required. So, all we need to check is for every permutation sigma in Sn. If sigma is not identity, then we need to check that the summand corresponding to the sigma in this summation is 0. So, then we need to prove that A 1 sigma 1 a 2 sigma 2 etcetera a n sigma n this term this product is actually 0 and this product is there they are elements of the field and the product is 0. So, it is enough if we prove that one of them is 0. So, that means we need to find that is we need to note to note that there exists an index i naught from 1 to n such that i naught is bigger than sigma i naught. Sigma i naught is the column index and this is the row index. So, if you can prove this there exists an index for which this is 0. So, that will mean that a i naught sigma i, I naught this is 0 because it is upper triangular. But this is very easy because you start from the top end. So, if look at the, uh, the index n and compare n and sigma n sigma is not identity. If this is equal this n cannot sigma n cannot exceed n. So, this is this is always. So, if it is equality here go for the lower index and keep comparing them and all of them cannot be equal because sigma is not an identity. Therefore, we can we can definitely come to a situation where uh, index row index is bigger than the column index. Okay. So, similarly as I mentioned earlier similarly for the row triangular matrices. So, finding a uh, determinant of a upper, triangular matrix, let me use the triangular means either upper or lower triangular and, and I will not uh, uh, mention the numerical examples because 
uh, one can check them easily once you know the theory correctly. So, the next, next uh, theorem I want to mention about the block matrices. So, that means I have a matrix, I have a matrix says A is R cross R matrix, C is S cross S matrix, square matrices, these two are square matrices and B is uh, R cross S matrix M R S K and using these three matrices I form another square matrix which will be like this A here, C here, 0 matrix here, this is 0 matrix and this is a B matrix. Note that the columns number of columns is R here, number of columns is also S, S here. So, it has R plus S columns and let us check the rows, this has R rows and this has S rows. So, it has R plus S rows and R plus S columns. So, it is a square matrix of order R plus S and in this case we want to prove a formula determinant of this matrix A 0 B C, the determinant is nothing but determinant of A times determinant of C. This is very useful for computational purposes. Okay. So, what do we do? Uh, as I mentioned in the beginning that uh, we do elementary operations of uh, rows or columns and I will stick to one of them uh, or or, or when I do both, I will mention it. In any case, uh, when I do row operations on A, for example, from A, I will come back to A prime, transform A to A prime and what the usual procedure what we adopted in a Gauss elimination. So, use the pivot element and bring it on the top these entries will check, uh, these entries will change. So, by row and column operations and with the minimal um, exchanging the rows or columns or also minimally multiplying by scalars, we can transfer this matrix A to the matrix triangular matrix like this, it is R cross R matrix. And if I would have used elementary operations which I have to multiply by scalars, then the determinant will change by a multiplication of that scalar. In particular, if I have interchanged the columns or rows, then the determinant will be minus. So, in any case, what will be the difference between the determinants? Determinant of A and determinant of A prime, they will differ by only by a scalar. So, this equal to A times. So, for some A in the scalar, there exist when I make these operations. So, these are elementary operations, row or columns. operations to bring it to this form, this is triangular, upper triangular. So, determinant will change by this and uh, we have seen the determinant of it upper triangular matrix is nothing but the product of their diagonal entries. So, this is A times these new entries A 1, A 1 1 prime, A prime 2 1 or A prime R R. This is what the determinant change. Similarly, for C, I will do the similar thing. So, uh, for C, uh, uh, similarly, there will exist a scalar C such that the determinant of C will change it to C times determinant of the new matrix C prime, which will be upper triangular, same argument. So, this will be C times C prime 1 1. C prime uh, C prime C prime 2 1 
C prime S S. Same argument. Now what do I do? I have this matrix, this block matrix A, B, 0 and C. Now what did we do? We have made row and column operations on this to get the matrix A prime. Now I do the same row and column operations which I did for bringing A to A prime. So this will not meddle, this will only meddle with these blocks. So and similarly for C, I will do the same row operations here and same column operations. That will not change the form of A which I brought it to A prime. This B might change, but we do not care about B. So, by the same row and column operations, this block matrix will get transformed to the new matrix which will has to be multiplied by this A and C and then this matrix will get, uh, get the form this A prime, some B prime and C prime here and 0 here. So, this new matrix now because A prime is upper triangular, C prime is upper triangular, this new matrix is also upper triangular. So, therefore, the determinant of this matrix is nothing but the product of the diagonals here and that product of the diagonals here is nothing but A times the product of the diagonals is nothing but this determinant A prime and similarly this one. So, therefore, this determinant is nothing but A times A times determinant of A prime times C times determinant of C prime. Note here I have, I have used I have used the commutativity of the field. So, one might think that things may not work, things do not work when your base field is not commutative. There are exam, there are interesting examples of fields, they are not called fields, they are uh, skew fields. Skew field means uh, it is a it uh, it is a ring may not be commutative, but every element every non zero element has inverse. These are also interesting object to study especially in physics because quaternions, but the linear algebra will not work uh, very well with that. So, so, the determinant of this is this and then we just now proved that this determinant is equal to this determinant and therefore, this is nothing but determinant of this. So, this proves the theorem. Now, we will take a short break and then we will come back. Uh,